I, yeah. I didn't even know that was going to happen. That usually doesn't. <laughs> you don't hear that. So clear. We are recording. We're back. You're so much more advanced than I am. <laughs> well, I'm surprised actually, given my age. But COVID made me um, become a little more savvy with Zoom. Yeah. And yeah, I well, actually used it before COVID hit, so I already had some experience with it. Good. Good for you. Good. Yeah, you're ahead of the you're ahead of the game for sure. Okay, so um, let's start again with your uh, professional credentials and work experience. So, just a brief summary of what year you got started in prenatal massage and your work experience in it. All right. Well, um, I'm Claire Marie Miller, and I've been doing massage since 1979. I graduated from the Boulder School of Massage. And prior to that, for seven years, I was an x-ray technician. So I've been in the field of healthcare for a pretty long time. Yes. Um, yeah, so, and my, my beginnings in pregnancy massage were getting pregnant myself. And my son was born in 1981. So in 1980, while I was living in Lake Tahoe with my husband, um, that's where I had all three of my children. Um, my friend, Judy, who had a, a less hours in training, I had a thousand hours. So she had 250, so she wanted to learn from me. So we set up these classes and we taught a few other people. And after every class, she would give me a massage. And we started, we really made it up as we went along. Um, yeah. And I did have massage in the first trimester, that can be an issue and it really shouldn't be. Second trimester, third trimester, it was fabulous. She, I know she massaged me a minimum of 18 times. In, in that pregnancy. So I was getting them almost every week for a while. So it, yeah. it was great, it was great. Um, yeah. And then when it came time for labor, Judy was the one I called and she came over and did some labor massage with me. Again, we didn't have a book, we didn't have a training. She right. just, whatever I said I needed, she addressed. Um, and my husband and I then went off to the hospital, have the baby and I was only in the hospital two and a half hours and 20 minutes of pushing, completely natural. Um, and I, I really attribute all that massage to it. I mean, it, yeah. it makes a difference when you go yeah. in really relaxed, really in tune with your body. Um, and then that continued through my next two pregnancies, which were home births. Mm. And I worked with a midwife in California and, um, so we, we actually got pregnant within three months of each other and became very dear friends. And so we traded midwifery and massage. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> That's a great, great. trade. <laughs> it was great. So I massaged her through a pregnancy. And, and, um, and then after that, and my labor again, wasn't really difficult. I had a very successful home birth with Jessica. And, and again, later with my daughter, Nellie. Um, yeah. And so Kate then, Kate the midwife, she then said, well, all my clients need this. And she yeah. refused to take you as a home birth client if you didn't get massages from me. <gasps> no. Yeah. Oh my gosh, how awesome. <laughs> it <laughs> was. And, and we, and back then, you know, we were, people would call us hippies, I guess, because we were living a more very natural life up in the mountains. Right. And so um, I bartered some of it. You know, sometimes it was childcare. Sometimes it was canned goods. You know, it was... We did whatever we could and I, I did a lot of massage. And then when the labors, because she was a home birth midwife, when the labors went long, I was the person to call. And I would go in and I would massage the mother. I would massage Kate, <laughs> sometimes the dad or the partner, you right. know? And so Kate always said that when I came in and did my massage work, that it was like the wall that was built up of tension just, and things moved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I got a lot of hands-on experience in Lake Tahoe. And then we moved to the East Coast. I live in Chapel Hill where we moved and I started teaching. And yeah. I taught at the Body Therapy Institute. Um, I started with them and then I developed my own training in 1990. So Nurturing the Mother is over 30 years old. And yeah. it's, it's been, I've been massaging pregnant women, uh, workshops, sometimes 20 and 30 pregnant women in the room. Um, good luck with the bathrooms. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I had one lady, this is really telling. She, uh -huh. um, she, she sat down after the massage and, and she was crying. And I said, oh. you okay? And yeah. she, this was her fourth child, her fourth pregnancy. 
Wow. She looked at me and she said, I had no idea I could feel this good. Yeah. And women just don't know that this is really not a luxury. Yeah. This is really taking care of yourself. And you will bet. And, and the core of nurturing the mother is if we nurture the mother, she can then take care of the family. But Absolutely. if the mother doesn't get supported and nurtured and cared for, she's going to fall apart. And yeah. guess what? Then the, the family falls apart. And I've seen it with my own daughter. She, mm -hmm. she did great through this last pregnancy during COVID. I drove wow. to Chicago two days on the road by myself. Wow. I got there. She had a wonderful home birth, a water birth. Everything went great. Um, and I gave her aftercare. But a few months later, she needed more care. And she mm. called me, she said, mom, we're not doing well. And her son was losing weight and mm. she was exhausted. So back in the car, back up there, spent another couple of weeks and she turned the corner and they're doing fabulous. Good. And not everybody has a mom who can do that, you know? Yes. Um, so it's, it's really, we, we need more pregnancy massage therapists. We need more awareness around it. It should be in every birth center, hospital. Um, I have a student out in Montana who took my workshop and shared her story and it was great. There's actually a spa in the hospital in Bozeman, Montana. Oh, wow. Which, which unfortunately now is getting really crowded because everybody knows it's a great place. <laughs> <laughs> I could have moved there and, and they <laughs> offered me a job. They actually would pay me to train their staff. Wow. And, um, so she said, yeah, when I was in labor, I, I walked, I went over to see the OB and then I walked, you know, across the hall, went and got a massage. And then I walked downstairs and checked in and four hours later, I had a baby. I was like, wow. that's so civilized. Yes. Why are we not doing that everywhere? <laughs> Absolutely. So I want to touch a little bit about um, OB doctors. And I know, at least in, in my practice, I've seen, um, conventional medical professionals, um, such as nurses and OB doctors and things like that, kind of more mainstream. Um, I find that nurses are becoming much more open to massage therapy. I'm starting to see more and more nurses in my practice, not as, much, not as many doctors as I would like to. And if I do see doctors, many of them are female doctors. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how have you seen maybe in your region or in your area, or maybe even from your students that come from so many different places, how um, have they succeeded or received, I don't wanna say backlash, but have hit like walls or obstacles with the mainstream medical professionals in their communities? That has been a lifelong challenge. <laughs> like for example, the story I just shared, I find the smaller towns with the smaller hospitals seem to be a little more flexible and open to alternative. I'm in Chapel Hill, we have UNC, we have Duke, uh, we have Wake Med. These are like big, powerful hospitals and they don't wanna take the time with us. Okay. And I've tried, I've tried. Okay. I did volunteer doula work. Um, I tried to get a program started in the NICU with um, massaging the babies, teaching the parents to massage their babies. Um, so. It's, it's been a wall that I've had to hit many times. And I'm, unfortunately, it, it doesn't break. Yeah. Um, I think it's really got to come from the people. Yes. Saying, I need this. Now, the birth center in Chapel Hill is fabulous. Yeah. So very lucky to have another choice for our mothers to go to. And actually, I'm on call for a birth at the birth center. Um, young lady who's I've known since she was two. Oh, um, so I'll be going pro bono. I don't charge because that's not what I need to do. And I'll be yeah. helping her out. I've been massaging her pregnant. And, and then that's another plus that my students have found is if they're massaging somebody through the pregnancy and if they're able to go to help out at the birth, they know where she's tight. They know right. what strokes work for her. Yes. And what not to do. Absolutely. So, well, I don't know if this makes you feel better, <laughs> but in, in South Florida, there's also a pretty big wall as well. Yeah. And um, the culture that we have down here is um, that there are massage therapists, but um, there's very, very few massage 
specialist um, when it comes to maternity care and postpartum care. Um, so it still kind of exists, but I am also working very hard to spread awareness. Wow. And you're right, I, at least from my community, what I have seen is that the women are the ones who are championing championing <laughs> the, uh, the awareness of spreading the word about prenatal massage, whether it's on social media or just, you know, um, just telling friends and just really sharing that information. So I really hope that changes soon, but I was just kind of curious because your area is very, really puts a lot of emphasis on higher education. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't sure if, if uh, the, the mainstream medical establishment there was more accepting of prenatal massage, um, but you answered my question. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think they're accepting if their client wants to go get it, they're fine with that, but they're not going to bring it into the hospital. Okay. And okay. one of the reasons, unfortunately, is, is legalities is legalities okay is there anything that um is it are there any resources that the public can go to in terms that you know of i know we're kind of delving into like uh, the legal part like but who who would you contact to change that like what would have to happen i mean are there it would have to be proof to the insurance companies that we actually save them money okay because, and that will be, um, that'll get the ball rolling. Yeah, and that would take lobbyists. It, it will take a lot of pieces. You know, it's in, in a lot of different worlds, you know, big ships don't move very easily. Yeah. Like the Suez Canal, they all got jammed up. Yeah. Little ships can move. So I would target birth centers. The more birth centers we have, the better it's going to be for the entire population. And, and that's been proven. That's been proven in Europe with midwifery. Mm -hmm. Um, so midwives and birth centers and options for women. Hospitals are for emergencies. Hospitals are for high risk. Mm -hmm. Hospitals really aren't for a really healthy woman having a baby. They're, right. they're actually, because of their rules, because of their protocols that they believe are very important, and for right. some are. Right. They, they can create longer labors and more intervention. And this has been studied Oh, tremendously. Um, yes. There's all kinds of studies out there around this work. Um, yeah. How okay. interventions can. So um, how does, I know you mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, but um, if a woman was watching this and she was like, well, I don't really understand the benefits of prenatal or postpartum massage, like how, how would you kind of simplify it and break it down? How does a woman benefit from massage during pregnancy and the postpartum period? So during pregnancy, her body's changing every trimester. That's one of the fun things of being a massage therapist with them. I've had some clients where I do the same massage every week for like years, <laughs> but mm -hmm. client is different every time she comes and it's like, oh, this is so much fun. Um, so it, it alleviates a lot of the discomforts, the back aches, the heartburn, the swelling, um, the hips, you know, because we're on computers and phones, neck and shoulders to carpal tunnel. Um, and I do belly massage. Now some spas won't let you do a belly massage, but I actually massage the baby. And I believe that actually assists in circulation to the placenta, babies track the heat of your hand. So there's a wonderful time of connecting to your body, to your baby. Hmm. We, are, we live in a very fast paced world. I mean, COVID yeah. did show th slow things down and a lot of us did enjoy that, you know, if, if we were able to financially. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it's really hard on babies for everything to be so fast hmm. um, on their nervous system. So it calms the nervous system down. It can help as we move into labor, it can help with labor and in postpartum, it really helps bring the mother back into her body because it's gone through very big changes. And if she gets realigned, she gets her, her belly worked, she's got breastfeeding or even just bottle feeding the baby, no judgment ever. Um, there's a lot of neck and shoulders with carrying a baby. Uh, if she's had an epidural, 
she may have pain in her back and epidural rates are anywhere from 80 to 90% most places. So pain in the back can last a lifetime. And I, I track this myself with my students. Right. Have epidurals who will say, I still have pain there. Wow. Not everyone, but you know, so, so there can be things if she's had a cesarean, we know that they have what 35% cesarean rate these days, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so the healing process for that and a, and a feeling of being cared for because now she's got a baby to take care of and everything is going out, out. Her energy is moving out to the baby, but yes. if she's not being filled up. She's going to feel depleted. She's going to be more at risk for postpartum depression. She's going to be more at risk for body aches, um, a lot of you know joint stuff in the hips. Yeah. Um, so it really helps tremendously. Good. How would a woman be? Um, you know, if she's talking with her mom and she gets a little bit of backlash, like, "Oh, I never had a massage when I was pregnant, and I was fine." or, you know, stuff like that, um, or maybe even her spouse, how, in your experience, how would you coach a woman? Um, and I use coach, I'm or just guide her in how, what verbiage should she um, communicate to her family? Let's say she comes in for an amazing massage and she's like, oh my gosh, I want this part of my budget. It has to happen. Mm -hmm. What would she say? What would she, how would she share that information for childcare? Um, let's say if she has a little one at home or how would she get her spouse on board and say, I, I really want this without, you know, um, coming off as, uh, I don't know, demanding, even though I know she won't, but is there any, are there any phrases or any way that she can express her need for a massage to her friends and family? Well, that's a great question. And that's challenging because when you're talking to someone who probably never got a massage, you know, the, the partner, the mother, the friends, they don't have a clue. And, yeah. I, and I see that in my world in just regular massage, people who didn't have it in their life uh, don't really understand it. But we know that humans need touch. And that's so important. So like with a partner, I would say to the partner, well, why don't you come with me to the massage and she'll teach you some things to help. Cause I know we can only do one every month, but boy, my legs are swollen and my back really hurts. And maybe you could do the massage for me. And that wouldn't yeah. cost as much. And I do that, I've trained partners and you'll either get a partner goes, oh, that's a great idea, I'll come. Or you get one that goes, oh no, I think you should go get a massage. <laughs> For the mother who says it, I would say, I'm really sorry you didn't have that opportunity. I mean, it's, 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 you know, I said that to my own mother, bless her. She died of Alzheimer's many years ago. Mm. And but before her Alzheimer's really kicked in and she loved massage, actually. I, I massaged her a lot. Good. Um, yeah. All the way up to the end, both her and my dad. But, but anyway, so she, she saw my video and she looked at me, we were sitting on the couch and she said, I had no idea that you could have that. I think that's amazing. Mm. But you just, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, so it's not a judgment on the person saying that, they just don't know. And, um, and so we do know that it increases circulation and that's good for the baby. It decreases stress hormones and that's good for the baby. Um, it alleviates a lot of discomfort. You can't take over the counter medications for even sinus congestion draining sinuses you know things that you can't take you mm -hmm. want to use natural remedies and massage is a great one for lots of it right so what i'm hearing you say is a, a really helpful way that a woman can speak to um, her partner her spouse is say come with me <laughs> come with me and learn some techniques. And then, you know, maybe that person will be for it. Um, usually I found that spouses and partners, like I've seen the same thing. Initially, they, they do want to help, like they do want to support and then they see how much work it takes to give a massage. And they're like, okay, so they're able to um, digest it maybe. And it's like an easier financial purchase because family planning is expensive. Um, 
yeah, young parents are always thinking about how to save money. Oh, you know, the birth is going to be expensive and the baby is going to be like baby and money, like, especially <laughs> for um, like husbands that I've seen, it's, you know, it's something that they think about, but most people don't think about the quality of the pregnancy. And I have found that massage can really add value to that. Um, but yeah, that's a really good tip. So she can say, Hey, come with me, or she can even invite her mom. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if, if the mom is a little bit of a skeptic or, or being a critical voice in her ear, mm -hmm. um, if, if the massage establishment allows for, for visitors and viewing some places don't, don't permit that. Yeah. I had a, a, a grandma, at one of my workshops and she, she was like kind of put off by it all too. And <laughs> And she said, that baby doesn't like me. It never moves for me. And so I get to the belly part and I do this little thing where I rock the belly and the baby almost always moves. Not always, but a lot of times. And this baby moved for me. And I called the grandmother over and I put her hands there and I said, okay, now do this. And she was like, oh, it moved. Oh. I felt it. <laughs> and it was just like this beautiful face of, oh, there's really a baby in there. You know, and, and I think even partners sometimes forget that. Mm. So doing the belly, feeling the baby move. There's some techniques I, I share in my work. And, oh, that's just awesome. It and is. When you get partners massaging each other, which I do really support a lot. Mm -hmm. Then they go on and they massage their children. Mm -hmm. And then the family is massaging each other. Yes. And it's not depleting our business at all. Um, mm -hmm but families are in touch. Yes, it is beautiful. That we have found historically mm -hmm. and, and physiologically and anthropologically and all those different groups that have studied human bonding is critical for, yeah. for, for psychological health. So the mother will be psychologically healthier. The baby will be psychologically healthier. You know, you're going to have less of what we see in our society mm. of a lot of the trauma when we yeah. are connected. Right. Um, so one question that I recently received from a woman is, hey, can you turn my baby if it's in the wrong position? <laughs> and I was reading some literature. I mean, this was, uh, I think, hundreds of years ago, maybe not hundreds, but it was a very long time ago, where I was reading some historical literature about prenatal massage and how doctors and midwives would have techniques to um, massage the abdomen. And I told her that, you know, as far as I was concerned, I, you know, didn't have the training to do that, but I have heard of it happen. What's been your experience or, or what's your opinion or yeah, experience on that? Well, I've, I've gotten that question quite a few times and had clients with that situation. So there are some, I have a whole list of kind of things that I give them that they could do. And the midwives used to use those really firm uh, ironing boards, the big heavy ones, and put them on the bed. And it would be a, like a Trendelenburg. birth. They would be head down, deep mm -hmm. up, so the baby could come out and then make a turn. Because mm -hmm. if they don't turn, if they don't have room to turn. So that, that's one method. Another was to put something cold. We used to say frozen peas for whatever reason cold at the top of the fundus because they don't like cold on their head so they'll move away from it. Mm -hmm. I've also heard music between your legs because they want to hear it so they're going to follow oh, the sound. Cute. Um, uh, I do sometimes I have actually kind of encouraged the baby you know just like a very gentle movements. Mm -hmm. um, we talk to them we say you know mom would really like you to, to be head down because it's a much easier way to get here. And, you know, mom continuing to talk to the baby that way. But then I also allow a place so nobody feels guilty or shame around having a cesarean because they, the baby didn't turn. There are legitimate times where babies are intelligent beings. Mm. And if the cord is in a way that's not okay or something else that I don't know about, like a placenta in the way, they will not turn. They will mm -hmm. know to preserve their life. And so we can offer these suggestions. Oh, in the outer corner of the little toe, acupuncture or pressure on bladder 67. 
Okay. It's proven to turn breech babies with a 40% increase. Okay. But when a doctor does it, they're listening to heart tones. When they're turning them, even back 100 years ago, they had stethoscopes. They were mm -hmm. listening to the heartbeat and they mm -hmm. wouldn't push past losing a heartbeat. Okay. So I would never turn a baby. I, that, that is out of the scope of my practice. I can say, right. these are all the things I know. These are the things you could try and just know that babies are intelligent. And if there is a reason that they, they shouldn't you know, turn, they're, they're not gonna turn. So yeah. all things are what they are and we, we would love this baby to turn. And I've had them use, I've had women use a lot of what I've suggested and babies mm -hmm. have turned. Yeah. And they've turned even at birth. I've, I've heard of babies turning head down at birth. Mm -hmm. I've also heard of head down babies turning breech at birth. Oh no. <laughs> you know, so there's every story out there. And, right. Um, yeah. So it is upsetting if you're going to have to have a cesarean. And I, I totally understand that. But even that can be done with consciousness. I actually massaged a woman right before she went in, like the day before. I actually went to her, her cesarean. They didn't let me in the room, but I was right outside. I massaged her right after when dad was with the baby. And the nurse mm. thought it was fabulous. It's also a small hospital. Okay. And they were you want to more, emphasize on the small <laughs> they were much more receptive but if you're a high-risk mom and there's stuff going on you want to be at the big hospitals because they're really good at what they do yeah let's talk about high risk um because i feel that for women sometimes they're classified as high risk but maybe innately like within their own body and their skin like they don't view themselves as high risk so um, when they're calling a massage therapist um, that's certified in prenatal, mm -hmm. is that something that they should share? Um, and what, what classifies as high risk and how would it affect a massage session? Well, that's another great question. And there's a lot of different variables that could be yeah. considered high risk. So the biggest one being blood pressure. So you need to, if she's, if she's high risk and she has high blood pressure, she does need to let you know that. Um, if she's high blood pressure and she can still work her job and she's not taking any med, it's not going to be an issue. Right side, left side, pregnancy massage, same as usual. If she's high, if she's high blood pressure and she's taking medication, but she's still able to work her job, live a normal life, right side, left side, I do sideline, not a problem. If she's high risk, if she's um, high blood pressure and she's on restricted activity and no longer able to work her job, take her dog for a walk, whatever, she has to lay on her left side at home a lot. You need doctor's permission. They need to know you're doing massage. Now I did do this with a client. I, I went to her home. We had physician permission. We did the entire massage left side line and she has a beautiful, healthy adult child now. Um, okay. And so it actually lowers blood pressure, but she had a special condition. I think she only had one kidney. Um, so you need to know what it's about. So that's high blood pressure. If she shows any signs of what's called toxemia or eclampsia, where she starts swelling. And, and when you've taken a training like mine or others out there, I'm sure, uh, you learn about all these things to keep an eye on. And one showed up at my workshop and we said, no massage go to the ER. We, the two therapists drove her to the ER and she ended up in ICU that night because we know to look out for these things. We would not give you a massage if your swelling is pronounced because we've been trained. Right. We so need, we don't diagnose either. We send them to the doctor and say, ask them what that is. But I'm yes. not going to massage you because it looks like something that we could be concerned about. Right. But so just Again, a woman that is experiencing high blood pressure, definitely something she should share with her massage therapist. And if she has a lot of um, like swelling, specifically like in the face, right? That and in the neck, um, that is a red flag. So any woman that's watching this, <laughs> keep an eye on that. Or swelling in one leg could be a blood clot. Okay, yes. Um, Preterm labor is another high risk. Okay. She's having a lot of contractions, but not only is she having contractions, she's actually dilating mm. and she's on bed rest. And I've also done those with physician permission, out call in her home, very gentle massage. 
which was fabulous because she's having to lay around a lot. You know what that does to your body. Yes. Things don't move as well. And so again, massage is actually indicated for some of these high risk conditions, but the doctor needs to be on board with it. Um, yeah. And the massage yeah. therapist needs to be educated. Other ones, multiple pregnancy twins generally aren't a problem. Usually they can go to full term, but triplets, I've worked on triplets. And um, yeah. one of my students had quadruplets and I counseled her through that. Gentle wow. massage, again, alleviate back aches. And actually I went and did it in the hospital at Duke um, on, her, on the one with triplets because she was right. on bed rest. So there can be a, a number of different conditions that can show up um, that they're watching. Okay. So they need so, to educate their therapist as to what it is. Right. A lot of um, pregnancy books and literature and some even uh, some places have even recommended women to lie on their side for the duration of their pregnancy. Um, let's talk a little bit about that. In, in my experience, I've seen a lot of um, muscle tension develop like on that left side. They're afraid to move or shift around during their sleep. What's your opinion or your experience with that specific piece of advice for, for women? So um, they did, a, a nurse told me this. She said there was a study that was done. I don't have the study in hand, I wish I did. And she said, as long as your blood pressure is normal, Right side, left side, not an issue. Okay. You can lay on either side. But obviously side lying is more comfortable and lots of pillows is very helpful. If you don't have a big, thick king pillow between your knees, I prefer that to those long snake-like things because they're just like too much to handle. Yeah, they're, um, they're a lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm like what do people do with these things when, when the pregnancy ends? <laughs> I don't know, throw it out probably, I don't know. There's but, like but landfills filled with with pregnancy <laughs> pillows. Yeah, a big thick pillow between your knees, a pillow to hug, a thick pillow under your head, but not under your shoulder unless you have um, heartburn. If you have heartburn, then you're gonna wanna build yourself up so that you know, you're know you more of an angle. Um, so getting comfortable with sleep, maybe a tiny pillow right at your waistline. Mm. Um, so if you could, some of the stores have these little, or you can sew on a little tiny pillow um, so that because that curve in your waistline, mm -hmm. it's kind of achy. Um, so rolling side to side, as long as you're not a severe high blood pressure where you're on restricted activity and your doctor has made that very clear that you have to stay on your left side, you really do need massage. Um, right. Yeah, so then otherwise right side, left side. When you, I have women to say, oh my God, I woke up laying on my back that I hurt my baby. I said, no, you woke up and you rolled. <laughs> body is intelligent and you yes. really if you listen it really guides you good good uh let's talk about sideline you you say that word often so mm -hmm. for um those that are, are not therapists sideline just to um educate you guys means like the woman lying on her side, kind of like in a fetal position as if you're going to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's a term that massage therapists use industry-wide, mm -hmm. uh, but that's what it means when you hear it. I wanna to touch on the belly pillow or the pregnancy belly pillow. Uh, I have had some women call and say, oh, I really wanna lie on my stomach. Do you have a pregnancy pillow? I really wanna lie on my stomach. Some women uh, may have had that experience and have had a good experience. Mm -hmm. So what would, you, what would you say on positioning in terms of that desire <laughs> to lie on the stomach? Um, usually those folks are, are face down sleepers. Okay. Um, and if you talk to any chiropractor, they will tell you face down sleeping is one of the worst things you can do for your spine. Mm -hmm. So it's not the best for the human being pregnant or not, you know, just, just right there. But they, they love it. It's a comfort thing. If they're not too far along or too big, there are some, there's one that was called the body support system. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was kind of okay. I could see that. Uh, the other thing is when you lay face down, your sinuses fill up. Mm -hmm. um, and so that you already have the potential for sinus congestion pregnant because of increased hormones and increased body fluid. So now you've added face down and it's even harder to breathe. 
you don't right. respirate as well face down. Mm. Oxygen feeds the baby. So sideline, your ribs can go both ways. Mm. Um, so that's why, I, and actually during COVID, I did a little thing. I think it might be on YouTube. I, my assistant helps me with those things. Um, and I was like, I maybe did it on Facebook. Um, sideline is perfect if you have to have a mask on because you don't want to lay face down with a mask. So I, and I'm so comfortable giving sideline massages. I have better access to the pelvis. I mm. can do stretches with it. Um, so I encourage women, so if they really want to be face down, and I, let's say I had a, a spa or a place where they came there. They're, they're like, not going to come if I don't do that. I will give them 10 minutes of some effleurage and petrissage on their back. And then I get them on their sides and do the real work. Yeah. Just so they can let's, experience it. You mentioned COVID and the mask. So uh, at the time of this recording, it's Memorial Day weekend 2021. So we've managed to survive 2020. <laughs> Um, share with me how how was it for you in 2020? Like how how was it for your business, for your practice? How did it affect your your client base? Did you see a growth in certain areas, a decline in other areas? Definitely a decline in client base, and and all my classes that were live were canceled. So yeah, I, I taught webinars because that's part of what I do for my living is teach and do a practice. I still got pregnant women though. I, I had a number of calls and I wouldn't say it was higher, but it was still, they were still calling and they're still coming. Um, and we both wore masks and I have a way to clean. I have a very easy room to clean and a bathroom right there. So I have a nice little setup here. Um, and I'm actually going to a birth whenever I get the phone call and I'll have to wear a mask the whole time at the birth okay. center. Uh, the mom doesn't have to, but I do. And I have been vaccinated. Um, okay. And so some of my pregnant women have also been vaccinated too. If she's been vaccinated now, I wear a mask and I, they don't have to. That's what's okay. happening right now. But initially, while we were in the really challenging phases, um, I did get pregnancy and fertility clients still coming. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about fertility because I feel that's, <laughs> I see you laughing. Uh, that's a little bit of an unspoken, like postpartum, it's not really known about. Um, acupuncture is a very popular um, service when it comes to fertility, mm -hmm. but in, in terms of massage therapy, how would you educate a woman that says what in the world would even happen during a session like that? Well, I developed a lot of this before it was even a thing um, and was teaching it back at the beginning of Nurturing the Mother in 1990 as I began my program. And I would always have a student or so at a workshop who would say, I've been having a difficult time getting pregnant. And I would do the fertility massage that I had developed. And lo and behold, she's pregnant. Uh, yeah. That happened a lot. Yeah. You know? So I, I knew I had something. And then I developed it as a certification and and I also work more now with IVF and IUI in helping them. I had one lady who just demanded, it was like, I got back from Chicago. I didn't even isolate. She said, I don't care. I want, you got to work on me. And it was like her third IVF and she, she's pregnant, you know. She's oh, good. Not. So I've had very good success with using it with the IVF, with IUI, natural. Um, we're not going to take care of a lot of the problems. I think acupuncture is fabulous. I think the two together are excellent. Um, so, and then sometimes, because what's happening today in our world, women do need the assisted reproductive technology. There was just a great special on PBS called Fighting for Fertility. I didn't yeah. even really know how much of the African-American community was suffering. Yeah. Um, because they hadn't been, they're now coming to me for fertility. Um, yeah. And so the word is, 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 you know, people are now talking about, because it's, it's like you said, people don't talk about it because they feel embarrassed. And they feel, um, why me? Um, they're sad. It's hard to share your sadness. Um, so it's just a lot of pieces. And we, you know, why we're having the fertility problems, I would say it definitely has to do with uh, pollution, mm -hmm. you know, water, air, food. 
our timing, you know, just so many, so many factors um, that, you know, I can't say it's one thing, but one of the things that happens with fertility massage is it relaxes you. And at least you're gonna physically feel better. So it's a good investment. And if you are gonna take any of the other uh, avenues, you're gonna go into it healthier and feel better. And it right. works very well with acupuncture. It doesn't, I think they complement. So, um, and again, tuning back into your body. Um, I did train with Rosita and the Mayan abdominal massage. And I really learned a lot about specifics to the uterus, but I've also made my own Mm -hmm. adjustments because I do a lot of reflexology I can mm -hmm. actually feel when a uterus is out of alignment in the feet realign it and then go back to the feet and feel the change because it's fascia yes for those of you that don't know what Mayan abdominal massage is could you um, give a, a brief explanation so um, a woman named Rosita Arvigo went down to Belize and studied with Don Alejo a Mayan elder and he taught her about really working in the core of the body, not really for fertility, more mm -hmm. to just, you know, that's where everything's going on. And abdominal massage in general, not just how the Mayan does it, which has a really an, an Asian component to it. There's a lot of numbers and counting, and that's mm -hmm. a very Asian style, which when you look at, you know, when you look at how people traffic down the coastline into you know, Central America over from Asia, you can start yes. to understand some of the how things are connected. Um, so it's, it's really, um, she uses a lot of herbology and some of it is her own um, adjustments that she has come in, into over time. But it was, the best thing about it was to just really hone into the uterus. And um, so I, it gave me another level of awareness. So I was very grateful. And I got to work on her too, which is really awesome. Oh, that's really great, yeah. yeah. She's an amazing woman. Um, so I use some of that in my own style within my training and um, it, it's all good. Everything's good. Reflexology is amazing also. Mm -hmm. uh, I use a lot of that in it as well. Good. And for those of you, <laughs> yeah, for those of you watching, there is a difference between reflexology and a foot massage. Um, so just to be clear on that, <laughs> it's another um, style of body work, but there is a lot of study that goes into it. It's a question that I get often. Um, so let's go into, um, we, you spoke a little bit about the African-American community and then just like more of an Asian style of massage in 2020 and that whole year race was a really big factor in the news and in current events. And there's been a shift in terms of um, accessibility and, and the massage industry. Where have you seen the biggest changes for um, either Asian, Hispanic, African-American, um, that type of population and massage therapy? Do you have any thoughts on that? I love seeing a multi-diverse room um, yeah. because it's, it's where all the barriers are gone. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, when you're massaging somebody, you're not thinking about their race. You're thinking yeah. about the human being and where they're holding tension and you're connecting. And so it's, it's really been beautiful. I've never had any, any challenges, knock on wood. <laughs> I'm a little bit superstitious <laughs> um, with any kind of diversity issues within the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love seeing that it's really grown. So when I first started in massage, it was mostly white folks, mostly Caucasians. And yeah. then it was somewhere in the 90s, late 90s, I started to see more African-Americans joining our, our, our mm -hmm. classes, you know, and, and growing and expanding. And it was just great. And there's just such a, many of the women are actually, have spoken, especially with the pregnancy, how earthy and, and grounded they are. And, and there were granny midwives back in the South who, who mm -hmm. knew the ways of touch and herbs and positioning and all that with childbirth. And so there's a lot of um, indigenous wisdom within them. Mm -hmm. So that was really wonderful to experience that. And then the Hispanic population came next. And they also have a lot of wisdom. Again, mostly because we're when we share childbirth as a group of women, I feel like the barriers are gone. And yeah. we're just all talking about, you know, what your mother taught you, what your grandmother, what your culture brought. 
in, like when we do pelvic wrapping, that's from a Hispanic culture, that's from the Mayan, that's from the uh, Guatemala, you know, Colombia. They, they, they wrap the belly and it's like, oh, you guys are so right on with that, you know. <laughs> things, you know, that we've learned in the Asian population too. I mean, I'm well versed in shiatsu. It was one third of my training in massage school, 300 hours mm -hmm. in shiatsu. And yeah. so it's a big part of my work. Um, and so a lot of the mother roasting after postpartum, you know, don't have ice cream. You don't have cold food afterwards. You need warming food. You need warming oils. You need moxibustion. You need heat on your body. You need to rebring yourself back into a strong core and rebuild your chi. So I think that all these, this diversity in our field, in the massage therapy field is, I mean, I think we should be at the UN. You know? <laughs> <laughs> massage, and, and if they really listen to us, we're all one. And we're all, we all want the best for our families and, and our children. And so giving them that, you know, get, opening those doors for all of us to share uh, makes everyone better. So I yeah. I mean, I water shiatsu with this 350 pound African American man who's such a gentle giant, you know? Mm -hmm. And we were so different. And then I watched him watch his 14 year old son, which touched mm -hmm. at that time in that community between men was a little bit, you know, sticky. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I think that body work and massage. I love the concept you said about families massaging each other. I feel the same way. Um, I think that there's so much power and there's a lot of barriers that can be broken down even among um, different demographics that are not used to receiving body work and massage, which now they are. I think it's really exciting. I see a lot of young people coming of age in their you know, early 20s, mid 20s, early 30s that are embracing um, massage uh, both male and female, and they're just, you know, it's just part of their self-care, which is really, really nice. Um, how have you seen bodywork and massage, specifically prenatal and postpartum, develop since 1979? <laughs> what are some of the biggest, uh, share with us just like the biggest milestones that you've seen in terms of the mentality that, that society and women have, have developed? Uh, it's definitely much more accepted. Um, you know, when we were starting out to do this work, I don't know, we just, we just did it. <laughs> you know, should we, shouldn't we, what are we doing? No, that feels good. That works. Oh, okay. Can you do that? <laughs> you know, um, so it's, it's really grown and it's, it's become a little more systemized, which is a, a better way to teach. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the classes really started booming. I mean, there's other excellent instructors out there. There's um, Elaine Stillerman up in New York. There's Carol Osborne. There's uh, Kate Jordan. We were kind of the four who sort of took the reins that I know of. There may be others that I'm not mentioning and I apologize mm -hmm. for that. Um, but we really all started teaching classes and our classes were filling up and people were really interested. And then massage started going to burst. You know, people started saying, well, uh, I feel so good. Could you, could you come to my birth? So doula started wanting to take the training and also massage therapists becoming doulas. And mm -hmm. that became more and more popular. Um, and so, you know, it's just been growing ever since. Um, all of the franchises require training in it. I've trained for Massage Envy. I've trained for Hand in Stone. Uh, elements I've done reflexology for them. A lot of spas have hired me. Sandals Resort hired me. Um, oh, how fun! <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so I think you know it's it's something people expect to have available to them. You know that it's not actually out of the norm anymore. I think it's very normal. Um, and so, yeah, I hope it continues and grows. And I have a feeling it will. I have a feeling that women are just still finding their voice in terms of what they want, expressing what they want, sharing with their friends, sharing with other women mm -hmm. and supporting each other and sharing on social media, sharing on different channels, um, that this is something that can be done and it is, it is part of healthcare. So mm -hmm. yeah, 
Claire, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for doing <laughs> this, Michelle. This was really fun. Good, good. And, you know, thank you for just, I mean, you're a pillar in the prenatal massage community and just women's health care in general. So I'm just really honored. Thank you for taking this time. And um, yeah, it was wonderful talking to you. It's wonderful to talk to you too. I hope we get to spend some time together in the future. I hope so too. All right. Take care. Bye. Well.